Hello, welcome to my presentation, Creating Fungible Tokens Using AX9 for the Eternity Universe 2 Hackathon. My name is Philip and I'm a full stack developer working with Eternity and I've also been part of the creation of AX9. First up the question, what is a fungible token? A fungible token is a token where each token is interchangeable with any other token of the same kind meaning any account or token holder only holds a specific balance of tokens, not specific single tokens. Also, when I transfer, only a balance is transferred, not specific single tokens. In the specific use case of blockchain-based tokens, those usually come with a standardized implementation for the specific blockchain or the specific virtual machine environment of that blockchain. On Ethereum, many are familiar with the ERC20 standard. That is an implementation of fungible tokens in Solidity. What is AEX9? AEX9 is a proposed fungible token standard for Eternity. The goal for AEX9 was to build a simple token standard that is extensible and that is quite similar to the ERC20 specification on Ethereum, so that developers would already be familiar with the concepts general structure of using this fungible token standard. Here I provide the link to the repository where you can find the documentation and reference implementation of the Eternity fungible token AX9 smart contract. Next we will go through this together. In the repository you will find a structure that was created using a project. In the readme we can see the documentation for the AX9 token standard. First, we start with a simple summary, abstract, and the motivation that was there to create this token standard and inspirations we have taken to create it. Let's start with the specification. First, we have the specification only for a basic token, the most simple fungible token that can be used. Let's have a look at the interface. In the interface, we have our meta information which consists of the name for our token, the short symbol, and the amount of decimals. After this, the possible events that may be thrown are defined. Here we only have the transfer event transferring from one to another address and the amount that was transferred. In the interface, all of the methods are defined that the contract implements. We will go over them one by one. The first method that we will look at is the AX9 extensions function. We will discuss extensions a bit later, but the AX9 extensions function has to be implemented by every AX9 smart contract listing all of the implemented extensions. In the default implementation, this is supposed to re return an empty list. Next up, we have the meta info function. This is a simple getter function to only return the hard-coded meta information for that specific token. The total supply function returns the total supply that is currently available for that token. The balances function returns a full list of balances for each account and the balance they have. The single balance function returns the balance for a single token owner. This result returns an optional value. If the token holder never had a balance of the token, none is returned. If the token holder had tokens in the past, but doesn't currently hold any balance anymore, zero is returned. The next function is the transfer function. This is a stateful function that transfers a specific amount of balance from the contract caller to a specific account. Here we pass the to account and the value that is supposed to be transferred. There is no return value given. Any transfer must fire the transfer event to follow the AX9 standard. As we've just explained, each transfer has to trigger the transfer event. This consists of the from account, the to account, and the value. This may be used for later indexation or post-processing of AX9 transactions. Next, let's have a look at the extensions that are provided in the reference implementation. Every extension must be listed in the AX9 extension return value. 
as a string. For example, for the mintable extension, the mintable string has to be included in the array that is returned by the x9 extensions method. The mintable extensions allows tokens to be minted under specific rules for one account. Here the account the tokens should be minted to and the value is passed as arguments. Of course, the function should abort if the call.caller of that function is not the owner of that smart contract. Otherwise, an unlimited supply of tokens might be minted. The mint function must trigger the mint event that includes the account it has been minted to and the value of tokens minted for later indexation. The next event we will have a look at is the burnable event. Again here, burnable has to be included in the AX9 extension's return value. The burn function burns the past value of tokens from the caller of the method. Here as well, the burn event must be triggered when the burn function was successful, including the address from which tokens have been burned and the amount of tokens burned. The next extension we will have a look at is the allowance extension. Allowances are a concept that allow other accounts to trigger a transfer for your account. This may be used in smart contracts where you do not transfer them the full amount, but you allow them to use a specific amount from your tokens for them to later use them or choosing not to use them eventually. An allowance is created using the create allowance method. Here an allowance is created for a specific account, for a specific value. The allowance is created from the call.caller account. Next is the method transfer allowance. Here is passed from which account to which account what value is transferred. As for any other transfer, the usual transfer event must be fired. The allowance getter function returns the allowance from a specific account for another account. The allowances function is a simple getter function to return all registered allowance for that token. The allowance for caller getter function returns the allowance from a specific account for the caller of that method. The change allowance allows for the call.caller to change the allowance for a specific account by a specific value. The value that's passed here is the difference that has to be changed in the allowance. For example, if you have already given 50 allowance and you want to make it 100, you give plus 50 as value change. To lower the allowance, for example to 10, you would have to pass minus 40. The reset allowance function resets the allowance for a specific account to zero. The create allowance function has to fire the allowance event from which account, for which account, with what value an allowance has been created. The next extension is the swappable extension. This was prepared in order to be able to transfer possible AX9 tokens to a newer token standard or to potential native tokens that will be implemented later in time. Here, the whole balance of one caller is registered for swap. In the reference implementation, no specific swap has been defined. This is up for later implementation, but the standard should allow for any potential swap to happen. The check swap function has been created to check which amount of tokens has been swapped by a specific account. The getter swap function returns all tokens that have been swapped. When a swap happens, the swap event has to be triggered for which account what value has been swapped. All of the given specifications have to be followed closely in order to be considered AX9 compatible. Of course, any of the specific implementation that's outside of the provided interfaces and the specific requirements given in this document may be adjusted to your needs. For example, specific transfer rules can be applied. Any other additional logic you might want to implement in your smart contract can be added. Any other state, any other additional functions may be added and it's still considered AX9 compatible. The repository includes all of the implemented reference implementations for those smart contracts. In the contracts folder, you can find the fungible token SOFIA smart contract, which implements the most basic smart contract this includes a lot of comments for each line to explain you what is happening 
in this line of implementation to make it as easy as possible to follow. The fungible token interface is the interface specification of the basic token implementation. There is also a fungible token full implementation, which is a reference implementation of the fungible token, including all of the extensions provided. This looks quite long here, but again, for all of the lines that are relevant, comments have been added for anybody to understand what is happening in the reference implementation. Again here, an interface is provided. In the extensions folder, you can find all of your reference implementation for the provided extensions. For example here, just the source code for allowances, the burnable extension, the mintable extension, as well as the swappable implementation. So you can choose to build your fungible token basic together with any of the extensions you may want to have. In the examples folder, there's also a sample implementation for token migration using the swappable interface to be swapped to. Next, let's use the fungible token full reference implementation in order to showcase the interaction with AX9 using Eternity Studio. I pasted the smart contract into here, and now we can give our fungible token a name. Let's call it Hackathon example. We give it our decimals. Let's use the default 18. And let's give it a symbol called HE9. Let's also set the initial owner balance to zero for now. Let's use the deploy button to deploy an instance of the AX9 smart contracts to Eternity Testnet. Our contract has been successfully deployed. Now we can use here to interact with the smart contract. Let's first check out the balances. We expect there to be no balances returned. As we can see, our owner has an account with zero balance available. At first, we can use the mint function in the bottom to mint some tokens for our owner. Let's copy the address on the top and mint 100 tokens for our owner. This has been executed successfully. Let's again check all of the balances. And we can now see our owner has 100 balance. We can also check the AX9 implemented extensions. Here we see we have allowances, mintable, burnable, and swappable implemented. We can use our meta information caller to see what is the meta information. Here we have created the hackathon example, HE9 with 18 decimals. Our total supply right now, after we have already minted 100 tokens, is 100 tokens. We can check the balance of a single account, for example, our owner that we have minted 100 tokens to. We can also use the transfer function to transfer a specific amount of tokens to another account. I pasted a random account address here and sent 50 of the 100 tokens Let's again check all of the balances function. And now we can see both of our accounts have 50 tokens of balance in that smart contract. Next, we can try out the burn function. Let's burn 20 of the tokens we have remaining. After that has successfully executed, let's again check our balances and we will see our balance reduced by 20 tokens. I hope this gave you some idea of how you can use the fungible token standard AX9 on Eternity, how you can use A-Studio to try out the smart contract on Eternity Testnet and get a look and feel for how it behaves and encourages you to try more. Thanks so much for listening to my presentation. I hope this gave you a good first look into AX9 and fungible tokens on Eternity and will enable you to create some great innovations on Eternity Blockchain.